Hey guys, sorry for the wait, but here is the best Indies of October video. This month we teamed up with Strange Love, and together we picked some of the best games, not just this month, but really this year. So here they are. Now out of early access, Steridon is a little retro gem of a game. A classic space shooter recast as an endless roguelike, you work your way through a chaotic sea of projectiles and tough bosses, whilst also upgrading your weapons. Also, the backgrounds are stunning, almost like pixelated paintings with all their layers. If you swing by my channel, you'll notice that I'm a pretty big fan of Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare, and so it should come as no surprise that I'm also interested in checking out any new PvP games, and Secret Ponchos is one that I'm particularly excited about. With its spaghetti western style, memorable characters, and great art, it's a game with a lot of personality. It's also pretty serious about its gameplay. The 3v3 arena matches have a competitive focus, with player skill taking precedence over all else. If this sounds like your kind of shootout, then get ready to fire away. With an isometric view, turn-based combat, and single-player only, the Age of Decadence is the epitome of old-school RPGs. Perhaps this is because the game has been in development for over 10 years, but that's definitely not a concern. Titles like Divinity Original Sin and Wasteland have proven that computer RPGs are definitely back in vogue. But along with the old-school playstyle, you should expect an equally retro art style that would feel right at home in the 90s. With the Age of Decadence, the 90s live on. After being locked up in early access for quite some time, Prison Architect finally breaks free with a full release. As a management sim, it boasts a depth on par with Dwarf Fortress, but what sets it apart from its brethren is its prison setting. Playing the game with the reckless abandon often associated with GTA can produce some silly fun. However, when it's taken seriously and every measure is taken to ensure maximum efficiency and security, the darkness and horror of caging people like chickens becomes scarily apparent. Broforce has been an indie mega hit, and by now most of us know what it is. Metal Slug starring 80s action heroes violently liberating countries other than America. It's officially out of early access now, so this will be the last time we cover it here on this channel. In May of last year was when we first spotted Kingdom in one of our Kickstarter videos. Before that, in 2013, the game debuted as a free-to-play title and gained considerable popularity. Back then it was, and still is, a side-scroller with management sim gameplay and procedurally generated worlds. What you're managing is your kingdom. To grow it, you hire builders and guards, set up barricades and expand further past your base. At night, creatures attack, so you must protect your kingdom. There are a few problems with the game at the moment, however, namely the AI townsfolk who are slow, stupid, and at times more harm than help to you. The difficulty can also rise exponentially every day night cycle, making the game unfairly hard. We just got an update that fixed some bugs, and hopefully there'll be more alterations in the future. Still, this game is pixel gorgeous and has a strong concept at its core. Let's say you sit down at a stranger's computer. You start opening up files and looking through stuff, and eventually you come to a folder that just says, My Work. So you open it, and you- From Davey Redden, the creator of the Stanley Parable, like comes another narrative adventure that is maybe even more bizarre than last time. A lot like the Stanley this Parable, right this is a game like that's best played with little knowledge beforehand. Jumping okay, in blind is the way to go, so considering that, file. we're not going to elaborate too much further. All we'll say is that this time the story is a bit sadder and will once again leave you pondering its meaning for days afterward. Okay, I see a bomb. It's got wires, a button, keypad. 
Let's we're gonna right. go wires one by one left to right, okay? okay. Uh, the first wire doesn't have- I think we can all agree that what we love about indie games is how they're not afraid to explore the medium in new and different ways. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a party game that really takes this notion and runs with it. The idea is that one player is trapped in a room with a bomb, and only they can see it. They need to describe the bomb to the other players, who, with the aid of the bomb defusal manual, then need to give instructions on how to defuse the bomb. This provides a tense and thrilling cooperative challenge to defuse the bomb before the time runs out. What makes it really interesting is the different ways that you can play. You can do it in person with the bomb player using a VR headset or computer, or you can do it over Skype with people in different locations. It's like a physical and digital game all rolled into one, and that's pretty sweet. Games often depict battles whilst they're happening. But what happens afterwards with all the leftover mess? Who cleans it up? Well, Viscera Cleanup Detail is cleaning up this often contemplated quandary. With full janitorial simulation, the game puts the mop of responsibility into your hands. As well as some gloves, a dispenser machine, sniffer tool and plasma laser. All essential tools in the cleaning process. A lot of the fun is in the whack physics which you can go to town on in the sandbox mode. Not to mention, there is something oddly satisfying with cleaning all the blood on your screen. The only problem is the depressing irony of meticulously ensuring everything is spotless in the game, whilst you're probably playing in a room that could use some of that cleaning attention. Our number one game of the month is Jotun, which we'll be exploring in further depth in our game of the month video next week. Thanks guys for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.